Hello, my name is Steve Chen with Chevron, and uh, I'm a distinguished speaker, uh, being supported by the SP Foundation on the Distinguished Speak Lecture Series, and want to thank you in this honor, and also thank you for locking in to uh, listen in. The title of my talk is The Latest in Ways to Improve Asset Value Through Better Wallet Management. We do a lot of water fronts, and we spend a lot of money uh, cycling water. The goal of my talk is to share with you what I've learned with the new ways to reduce water and improve oil and gas production. As I told you, uh, the SPE that I normally talk for five days, but I need to squeeze in and talk about 20 minutes today. And I want to focus on what is important, what's new. The talk are uh, sort of complicated, so I'm going to give you an overview. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about introduction, talk about prevention, and I'm going to diagnosis. Many ways of diagnosis, except I'm going to talk about in the well traces only. Obviously, diagnosis without solutions no, not very good, so I'm going to talk about solutions. I'm going to talk about only two new type of solutions. One is in-depth solutions for reservoir problems. Another one is for near well bore problem solutions. And last of, them, last of them will be integration, putting all together. For introduction, what is produced water management? As you can tell, in 1922, there's a report saying how much oil and water we make each day and how much water we made. Each day, the world produced 75 million barrels of oil. That's pretty good except that on average, we are making 300 to 400 million of bar barrels of water each day. A lot of companies make more water than oil, and some of the oil companies may better be named water companies, the oil company. So we have to be improved. There are two types of fields, new ones and mature fields, and we have to look at differently because the audience, there are some new students coming in and there are some of mature ones, I mean, experienced people. We have to focus that. We have to treat water management of new field and mature field very differently. For new field, when we come discover new field and start thinking about water flood, we have to think about prevention. How is to reduce the total cost of the whole field in terms of OPEX and CAPEX, capital expenses, and long-term operating expenses. It's combination that's important. However, if we do mature field, that means a lot of field that are maybe 90% water cut, then we cannot talk about prevention because a lot of things are already set up. So we have focus will be to delay abandonment of the reservoir of the field. I'm ashamed to say that a lot of field and real, uh, wells are being closed down because we could not manage a water flood anymore. And it's a shame because there's a lot of oil left in the ground still we could not get to economically. So for people who have experience with mature field, when you come to new field, think about prevention. When people have been working on discovery field and coming to mature field, you need to think about how can I prolong production of the field, of the zone, of the reservoir as long as we could. So different point of view. All right. So today, I'm going to talk about water flood management operations. Obviously, you is very familiar with this slide. Is the water flood operation have a lot of areas. Today, I'm going to focus only on the subsurface, the injector, the reservoir, and producers. Okay, I'm not going to talk about surface and separations at this time. Prevention. I'm going to focus a little bit about talking prevention. Suppose I find a new field. What do I do first? First, you need to know a little bit about your geology, and then apply the appropriate level of reservoir model to understand how is the best way to develop this field. Where do I drill? How do I going to complete it? Horizontal well, vertical well, and there are fields. We do a new, new field. We do vertical injector and horizontal producers and multilaterals. We have to think about different way to manage it to reduce water early water, premature water production, but also if I have water breakthrough later on, how can I solve it? Second thing is timing to start water flood. 
If I start the water flood too early, I'm wasting money. I'm going to start water flood too late. Then it's, you're wasting money too. You can lose reserve. I have cases where we delay water flood because we say, I don't want to put the money in. And yet you know that if you delay too long, actually a lot of oil will be not be recovered. So key is the timing of starting water flood. Obviously, there are new technology about horizontal well, multilaterals, and smart completions. Those are different topics for a different day. One of our topics that's very important is I field, some part called intelligent field of operations, where the new field you think about is putting instrument right at the beginning so you can do understand the reservoir every very often downhole. So you have information real time. Actually, someday I can sit home and notice and know where what the field is doing, what the well is doing. The key is intervention. Actually, I put tools in the ground that if I see a water break through, I can push a button and shut it down at the, that particular section. Instead of having call a, sorry about the service companies, that instantly have to call the service company, deploy a, 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 a divers to down sub hole, sub sea to get to the water shut off. So that's a new area. And obviously, you have to new think new way of doing business in those new fields. Totally different concept to think about. Now, come back for both new field and mature field is diagnosis. Why is diagnosis important? Diagnosis is important because you need to understand what the field is doing. All right? Like, if you're not sick, I go see a doctor, and the doctor do not do diagnosis, do not measure my temperature and say, I'm what's wrong, and treat it. How well, how easy I'm going to get well? Not very much. Right? Suppose I go to a doctor and say, oh, I give you this pill and you solve everything you have. Your chance of success is not very good. Same as us with doing a fuel water flood. If we do not understand what's going on, we just do anything in the field, the chance of success is not very good. So we have to do some sort of diagnosis. In this field, you, you, in this lie, you can see a lot of diagnosis. I'm going to talk today only about in the well. Obviously, there are existing data, seismics, logging, Bordering, pressure testing, fluid testing. But I'm going to into well traces because there's something new that you have not heard before. In the well tracer has been used for a long time. So what's new? Now first I'm going to describe what's in the well traces. In the well traces actually injecting a chemical in an injector, collect fluid sample from the producers and analyze it. And then look for breakthrough ways to get come uh, collecting chemicals from the Produces and see the breakthrough time amount. What's new? What's new is non-radioactive. Used to be we have doing a lot, a lot of places in radioactive traces. But a lot of places is very difficult because once you use a radioactive, radioactive trace in the field, we have to uh, periodically produce fruit from the field and make sure there's no radioactivity from the producers. So non radioactive is very good. And very sensitive. You are talking about parts per billion, parts per trillion level. Okay? The new chemicals for water flood, for water phase is called PL no, sorry, FBA, floral benzoyl acid. Okay? And I can use two pounds. One time I have a treatment in Indonesia. I can shift from England to Indonesia within two days. Two pounds of chemical. And I can I can do it. And obviously, a new for gas traces, we have PFC, and I'm doing it in different locations. What are typical things? Because understanding traces, you have to look at this slide, is what do you get from a new traces? On the y-axis is the concentration, and the x-axis is time. Typically, in check of traces, if you have early breakthrough, you, have, you come up with multiple peaks. Each peak depends on different path of the traces coming through from injecting producers. You want to, in the water flood, is you prevent early breakthrough. If the traces show up really fast, that means the water injecting are cycling real fast. We're wasting money cycling through the reservoir. So the job we have to do is delay this breakthrough as long as you could. If, you, if your trace breakthrough is late, late time, you don't worry about it. Okay. Next one is... What have we done in traces? One of the items, if anything I want you to know today about interwell traces is the word expect 
the unexpected. That means it's, the reservoir is not what you think it is. A lot of people think your reservoir model is the key. But so many times they've seen the reservoir model is wrong. And this traces the beauty about interval traces. You actually know what's happening down well. And every time I've seen cases where the geologist can be wrong, sometimes the reservoir engineer can be wrong, and both are totally wrong. I can show you some cases. And in this slide, with the right thought, are where we are currently have interval traces. Uh, America, South America, Africa, Middle East, uh, North Sea, Australia, Indonesia. And I'll give you some cases right now. It's West Texas. In this field, we have done water flood for 10 years. And after 10 years, the geology and reservoir engineers are still arguing whether the reservoir has fractures in them. Surprise. So I said, OK, let's solve the problem. So I inject a traces into one of the wells and collect samples throughout the reservoir around here and see what happens. And typical water flood, if you, you're doing a perfect water flood that would ideally inject traces in the middle, you expect the traces to show up or the water show up in the offset producers. So you inject a trace in here, you expect the traces to show up there. And it's not. The traces inject actually show up in producers several patterns away. Nothing show up near the well ball. And what does it mean? That means that your water flood is not perfect at all, far from perfect. Imagine all the oil you have near the injector being lost. You've been siphoning water for 10 years, and all the oil is near the well bore are not being water flooded. If you're abundant right now, so think about all the oil you left over there. And one amazing is that we put a dye in these in traces. And, um, and the traces is showing up in the next pattern now, actually in another competitor's field. Easy solution is that we can put some chemical in there and feel the, feel the fracture and we're back to normal again if we only know the traces. One th impact is that we have to rewrite the whole reservoir model going through from matrix to fractures. Another case is Indonesia. After water flight, we do surfactant flood. Imagine we do water flight with cycling water, and now we are going to enhance our recovery and injecting expensive surfactant. You'll be cycling the surfactant more expensive. So in this field, is we actually pick a very homogeneous reservoir. And the geology reservoir engineer both said, very good. Except I said, no, let's put a tracer in. That's the one that shipped traces from North Sea to Indonesia. And put four different traces into the pattern outside and collect sample in the middle. If everything is right, then all the traces from the, inject, from, from the injector on the corner of the pattern will show up around the same time as the inject into producers. Guess what happened? The traces on the south side show up in three weeks. The traces on the north side never showed up. The rest of us homogeneous. Geology is wrong. The rest of the engineer is wrong. What happens is there's a unknown water flow, maybe an underground river flowing from south to north side. We never knew. And based on that information, we're actually able to say that Whatever the chemical injected on the south side are only uh, affected on the south side. Anything chemical injected on the north side is lost. So when we relate the economics, we are able to justify to, that the field trial is successful. Actually, right now we are happy to say that based on the information, we are doing a, a, a bigger pattern of this EOR project. And that project is North Sea. Actually, in this case, we do multiple traces, four, in, four injectors and 22 in producers in the field, and for monitoring. The reason is that the drilling engineer want to drill well close to the producers, and the, both the geology and the rest engineer say, no, no, no. Based on our understanding, current reservoir models, the water breakthrough is going to be a few weeks. Why spend $10 million, $10 million to drill well if the water breakthrough is going to be 10 a week or no? a month or so. So, okay, let's solve the issue. So we inject the traces and see what happens. Remember, we expect the traces to break through in a month. A month come and gone. Six months come and gone. A year come and gone. No traces break through. I said, oh my goodness. The engineer in the field says, hey, what's going on here? I said, be patient, see what happens. 
two years later, that she used to break through. And I called the engineer and said, congratulations. She said, she said, why congratulate me? I said, you're lucky. Your fuel is perfect water flood, a piston flood. You don't worry about water shut off. You're OK. She has the, the patience to wait for me to water flood. And it showed up a lot of that. This is a good case. Because remember, Abelia, if the break, early breakthrough, the less efficient water flood. The longer the breakthrough, the better water flood. So this is a perfect case. So the one thing that surprised them, even engineer, is that the trace we inject actually going south instead of north. They drilled this set of wells to support this region on the north side. And they were planning to drill more, produce, uh, in, produce it on the north side and more injected to support the south side. Based on this information, they changed the whole strategy, the whole reservoir management strategy, because the water injecting going south. So what do you do? That means north is not being supported. The pressure going down, you're losing reserve up there. So you can change around, change the whole drilling completion around is that drill more injector in the north and just put, produce it on the south side. Think about all the money we save. Think about all the water, we, all the oil we make from this change in operation. And Tracer helps that. And that's another case in Bakersfield that we do spend a lot of money doing isolation of different zones. In this case, we have completion to shut, we complete the two zones separately. And so the two zones are not supposed to communicate each other. What happens is that I inject a tracer on the deeper zone, and surprise me, it shows up on the upper zone. And that's a total surprise to everybody. So we spend million dollars for doing nothing. What happens to figure out is maybe the fracture was too aggressive. They actually break through the shell, and the water injecting. It's going off. So in this case, if you didn't know, then we are, what, whatever we are injecting, are flooding on, off on, the, on the upper zone. And remember, all the oil left behind are being water flooded. And if you walk away, we have so much oil left in the ground. So here are several cases that in the well traces can really help you understanding the rest of better and be able to have arrive at the right solutions and get more oil out. I'm going to share with you how is the best way to um, improve your traces, to get success from the well traces. First, you have to find objective and design your colony. Okay, that's a very important key. Second thing is to look at the appropriate monitor wells. Of, obviously, you have to offset producers' injectors, but also others. How do you pick the others? You know, some of you have hundreds of wells. How do you pick each other? That's the key we have that we use a proprietary data that look at injector and producer data and be able to tell possible what well are connected to which one. And we use interwell traces then to support, make sure we monitor whether that's right or wrong. Number three is that actually you need to in inject enough traces to be detectable. And in cases, people want to save a little money and inject less traces and never see the traces because that's below the detection limit. Number four is most critical part. Make sure you do collaborative QC tests of the vendors. There are about 10 different service vendors out there doing email traces. And what we did, we sent different samples to different vendors. We find out out of 10, only two are good enough. The other eight give you the wrong data. Imagine it's not the cost of a tracer job. It's the wrong decision you make in the rest of management. That's the key. So make sure one easy step is that you do send a sample. You, you have your own water, spike it with little traces, and send it to the lab and do it for free and say, hey, prove to me you can do it, and I'll, 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 I'll uh, hire you. So that's one of the important things. More frequent sample at the beginning and less later, and collect more samples than is needed. So that's the key. My, my challenge right now is that I have a tough time uh, incorporating rest models. Sometimes I have to rewrite the whole total models, and which pay about a year or two. And that's what I want to solve together with the industry. Solutions. Obviously, diagnosis of solutions is not good, so we do solutions. There are a lot of solutions. Mechanical are the methods. You can read from a list. And there are also chemical methods. And again, cement is most likely used. Also resin and gel and foam and so on. But today, I'm going to talk about two gels for 
solving problems. One is for fixing the reservoir in depth. One is doing selective water shutoff in the producers. The first one is in depth conformance. A lot of where water flood you have is that you inject water. If you have high perm streaks going between injected and producers, the water inject will go and cycle into the high perm area and produce back. You keep cycling water. And you use a conventional gel. What you do is that you put a gel in here, and it's because most of the gels are near well bore. So it's near the injectors, and after you do the job and you put your water in, the water can go bypass and go through the germ channel again. That's why a lot of gel treatments for injectors, non fracture reservoir, are not very long lasting. So we have a different solutions is that we put this chemical in, that will automatically go inside the reservoir and then plug it in the middle reservoir. Okay, that's the difference. You do not reduce injectivity but improve the sweep resiliency. So what's the new product? The new product is called is actually very different. We have very, very small particles that we inject, easily inject in the reservoir and follow the water path of the water flood. And when it's inside the reservoir, when it's warming up, with time and temperature, the thing can expand many, many times, maybe 800 times. And so the water, the particle inject is going to go in the middle of the reservoir and expand and block it. So it's automatic. In a way, we call it bright water. That means it's smart. All you do is on your injection line, you inject this chemical in parts per million level, and it will pass. This chemical will follow the path. You go, and then right in the reservoir where you need it, you expand and block that channel. Okay? And one thing is that Chevron like to cooperate with other oil companies and service companies to get to develop what industry needs. And we, I, I have to acknowledge that we work with BP and Nelco to develop this product. I said, you come and Steve, I said, hey, so do you have to try it? I said, yes, we have tried it. 2001, we have done Indonesia. In this field, we have this pattern now here that we water injection here and produce on the side. And we do a little bit of traces and show that the water injecting are going all towards the east side and nothing going to the west side. If you do a conventional jail job, you'll be plucking all this and you cannot solve this area conformance issue. So we put this chemical in called bright water. So we inject in this injector, and somehow, and it's perfect that that the chemical inject is going to form move into the middle of the field on the east side and expand and block the channel right here. And you look at the decline uh, the decline curve and this oil productions, and you can tell after the treatment of our bright water, we actually reverse it. That means we are producing more oil after we do the job. Imagine that if we do, do not put this in, we are already abundant the, the field of that particular pattern because we are not economic to produce it. However, injecting this chemical actually produce more oil. Remember, in mature field, we need to uh, reduce water cut, increase oil, and delay the abundance of the zone. All right, and now, right now we have done something in North Sea, in uh, Alaska, and South Argentina. Again, I want to share with you what I learned and what how to best uh, in, uh, do this technology. First, you have to select appropriate candidates. One thing uh, available is make sure there's available oil reserve in the reservoir before you do it. Make sure it has a poor efficiency. If the reservoir has, has good sweet resistance, it doesn't help you. Make sure it has a poor sweet resistance. And the reservoir temperature has between 20 C to 150 C. That means 80 degrees Fahrenheit to around 150, uh, 300 F. Because it's particle, we'd like the fifth zone to be greater than 100 mid C, otherwise the particle is too big to enter uh, the, the tight zones. I avoid, avoid interval fractures. Sometimes, if, if, at least on the first few jobs, I would do a little bit of reservoir simulation to predict economics, and somehow you value some interval uh, transit time. The challenge now is we need to do more and more field trial to document and make this viable product in the field and learn how to use it right. 
And I'm going to talk about, now we finished talking about injectors, I'm going to for the producers, what's new technology in the injectors? On the producer side. On the producer side, it's the other way around. Is that, it's a completion. A lot of mature field we have, we cannot go back and complete anymore. These are several cases we have in Australia and Nigeria. It's a completion do not allow us to do the regular jail job anymore. Imagine this zone with a, dub, dub, uh, a dual comp, uh, gravel pack, and the water is coming into the middle zone, somewhere in the middle of this upper pack. There's no way we could have done it. And we, discontinue, we sort of think about pulling the whole completion and we do it again, but it costs several million dollars. So what happens? Sadly, we have to abandon that well. One well is 4,000 barrels a day of oil. We have to abandon it because we have no solutions. So what do we do now? Well, there's some new technology that we can do. They are called selective water shutoff. That means it's selectively, if you the producer inject this chemical in, when the water, it slow it down. When the oil, it let it come in. Okay, it's almost like magic, and some works, some doesn't work. And some places we call relative per modifier, and I prefer to call it selective water shutoff. Advantages are it's low cost, do not need a rake or coil tubing, or subsequent completion is okay. Low risk. Um, not many cases I've seen you harm the well. And there's some, actually some few success recently. The advantage is that it's not total shut off. So you water leaking in. Remember, in water flood, the water is carrying oil. So we do not want total shut off. Sometimes when you have put a regular gel in, total shut off, you're losing some oil. This product actually is selectively so that it, it let water come in to carry some oil in. Uh, but it is for non-fractured reservoir only. And some product cannot hold high pressure because this is only chemical, weak chemical. If you have really high pressure pushing it in, the, you wash out the product, some of them. We need more treatments. And uh, actually, there's some, also some bad experience that we pump chemical, it didn't work, and we're trying to understand it. So how does it work? We do a cold flood test to select and design. Because right now, about 20 years ago, as I talk about the recent product, we couldn't find solutions. Now it's the other way. We have too many products we didn't know. Then my daughter goes shopping earlier. She couldn't find any clothes to wear. And now she has too many, and she couldn't decide which one to use. And so we have a way to find out how it's best to select it. You know, we cannot do in the field, um, do multiple field trials to figure out which one. So I say, hey, let's do something in the lab to figure out at least screen product we should or should not use. In this case, we use core flood. We use the core and we put a pressure plug in the middle of injection and just see if any near well ball plugged off, uh, suck, uh, plugged off by the uh, chemical. So we are beginning establish water and oil so that we have a in situ oil water flood and put chemical in. We inject water after chemical in you have a big shut off of water. I put oil in, it comes through. And jet water again, and let it come through. And jet oil again, the oil comes through. So if you theoretically inject this chemical in the field, you have multiple zones. If zones of water coming in, you slow it down. If oil coming in, you let it come, almost like selective chalk waff. So ideal, that sounds good. But in the lab, we do in some cases see it happen. So what case is that we actually in this well, we can put it in the producer side and plate it all over the place, and wherever the water breaks through, we slow it down. Okay? This is the case. We plug it in, and we do another field trial. And you can tell that the oil production, the water cut is almost 100%. The oil production is low, almost abundant. But we put the chemical in, you can tell that actually we increase the production of oil quite a bit and reduce the water cut. So we turn this well, we're close to abandoning, to 400 barrels a day. So there are some cases we are successful. 
there are some excellent results. However, at this time, the few results are mixed. Some location work, some don't. And my goal is to, to I, you know, identify what is a good product, what is not, and where should it be applied. So we are still in the learning process, just to be honest with you. And how, how do you select a candidate? Here's what I come up with at this time. First, obviously, there is a, enough mineral oil. If the whole field is all so mature, not enough oil in there, no product will help you. So you have to do some material balance, make sure there's oil left in the ground. And you would like to apply this product with multiple layers of sandstone. You have layer of water, layer of oil, layer of water, layer of oil. If ev otherwise, if every zone is the same water cut, this product won't help you. Permeability, I would like to between five to three, uh, three uh, five to three thousand meters of formation. And if there's some clay-rich rock, be more careful, watch out for those because they tend to absorb some of the chemicals. If needed, I would really like to do some lab tests, what I described before, to select which one to try out to start with, especially in a new area that nobody has tried before. This is easy, this is head. You don't need Greek, you don't need coil cubing most of the time. And you can head it in, and uh, you do its job. And uh, make sure there are proper pre flush and pull flush because uh, it's critical for different products. Treatment tend to be uh, five to eight feet or two to five, three meters beyond the well bore. The challenge right now is still selecting the appropriate product and concentration and also learning how to improve on the process. Last is integration. We put it all together is that our philosophy is to have five phases of steps. We are very good, we do a, we understand we're engineers. We are very good in implementing phase four. We love to, a salesman come and call us up and say, hey, Steve, I have this nice chemical, try it. And we always run out and try it out. But that's not the way to learn. Learn is go through these five phases. First is understanding what our strategy is. Is to understand, one of the reasons why I do it is that uh, we have one case where an engineer who spent a long time uh, designing a water shutoff treatment. And he spent half a year and do it, talking to different people and do everything. And it's ready. And then he talked to his boss. And he thought, oh, I forgot to tell you, we are planning to sell that field. So very critical from beginning a project that you talk to talk about from a team, from as a team, from a manager, to have alignment, say, hey, I'm working on this. No, I, you know, it's okay. It's a whole field strategy of what to do. Next is the value, like dialysis. Use traces, logging to understand your problem first, and then uh, pick the appropriate treatment to solve it. Understand your problem first. And phase three is to identify option design. Think about, I have so many solutions, chemical, mechanical, other methods. Think about which one gives you the best chance of success. Obviously implement. Phase five, we seldom do because we're so busy nowadays. But the key is monitor and evaluate. That means have a job. Don't just walk off to something else. Go back and learn from it. I have one case that we do 10 jobs. One, few, one, one time a service company come by and say, oil company, we are going to do 10 jobs for you, free of charge. Let's do it. And they took it and do the job. What happens is after 10 jobs, we come back and ask, how do you go? I talked to a service company, I said, Steve, 100% success. I said, oh, really? This first time you try it out in the field and it's 100% success? How, 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 how do you come up with success decision? I said, yes, Steve, I promise you 10 jobs, I deliver and pumped, and you pay me. That's 100% success for me. On the hand, I talked to our own company guy and said, hey guys, how do you go? He said, oh, Steve, Almost have we've done anything. We pumped the job away and never seen any oil increases. So we have different perspective of success. For us, success is more, more oil and water. More, more oil, less water, okay? That's the key. So focus on that, understand what's going on. Look back. My goal success is on those less jobs, I would rather do two jobs at a time, design the well, well, and monitor, and learn from it, and then move on and stepwise. And then after you learn what it is going on, then you can do the whole job better. Long-term success, not one-shot do statistic stuff. Well, learn from me, okay? In conclusion, 
of this talk is I would like to run down what we learned. <clears throat> in water shut off, how to improve asset value? Oil and gas are most important. Do not focus on cutting water. Focus on making more oil and water. That's how our bosses look at us. Second, for new field, think about prevention first. Number three, diagnosis. There are some new non radioactive in the well traces. Two things you want to remember. Expect and expect it. All right, you learn something, so be open-minded. Second thing is that if you do traces, check the vendors. Give them a blind sample and make sure they can do it, because if you don't, you have 80% 80 chance, 80 chance of failure. Solutions, we have in-depth conformance with injectors. There's some new chemicals that can really help out in-depth for injectors. And there's some new ones. We are still learning from those as selective water shutoff producers. I'll share you with some good practice and challenges and some few data. I'll also share with you integrated skills. Process, remember strategy, diagnosis, options, implement, and remember, monitor. With that, I want to thank you for your time. And uh, if you have a question, feel free to call me. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.